Hey guys, it's your boy Trainman7000 with JPT by my side here. Yeah. Also watching the gameplay. Welcome to uh, Eternal Hour, Golden Hour. Um, so, we're back before we left off. Okay. After that day, time seemed to pass faster than before. I've been making small bits of progress every day, but life still hasn't settled down quite yet. It's been over a month since I moved back to Tokyo. Uh, everything feels better now. I've started remembering the fun times I once had had here and sometimes tell Yasu stories about those. Okay. Um, Yasu started speaking more and more and now they're just slowly becoming a family. We even watched a TV show together last night. If I remember it correctly, it was some cute anime about a boy who turned into a frog. I can't help but empathize with that boy, and I really wish I could do more and be a better guardian. Going, going from defending people in court to being a single mother, all, a, all while looking cool on a motorcycle. It doesn't matter how I say it, it feels funny to think that some kid depends on me. I think it can happen even to someone like me who has never had a ever had a boyfriend. I'm pretty sad that I look like a freeloader with no job, no income, nothing. The money will eventually run out, and I have to take care of Yasu somehow. I don't even know if I can practice law in the backyard in a, in a backward town like this. Even with the hard hardship, Megumi has been a lifesaver. We meet nearly every day now. We meet nearly every day now. Sometimes I wonder what my my real feelings are, especially when it comes to Megumi. I meet up with Megumi at the orphanage and we walk to a nice spot she knows by a lake for a picnic. Even with my life being so close and falling apart, the good weather and delicious meals with a good friend have done wonders for my mood. Hey. It stays like this that I live for now when I can just forget the rest of the world and enjoy the moment. Back to the storyline. And ever since little Hikaru's been showing up to play with the orphan, wow, she's such a great kid. Yep. So, Ren. That's odd. It's rare that. I noticed Megumi hesitating. What is it, Megumi? Well, I hate to ask you, but how about a job? But how goes the job hunt? It's going, you know. There's only one proper law firm in town. That's true. If they don't hire you, it's essentially just a few who have one person firms. Exactly. Tokyo's not the best progressive of the town either. You don't think anyone here is interested in a leather clad motorcycling defense attorney? I did apply, but I haven't heard back since. Of course, there's also the whole not married thing. This town has female lawyers, but they have families. I hate to even suggest it, but do you think that you need to change your image? Oh, maybe I should or there had to be another way. Change image? Maybe I should or there had to be another way and she's not changing. I don't know. I really don't know, trainee. This is, this is nearly impossible. I don't... <laughs> Maybe I should. As much as I hate letting this stubborn, prideful old 
town and push me around. This isn't about just me anymore. I still hope it won't come to that, and I'm holding out as best as I can, but... You know, Vin, I admire your determination, but sometimes you have to give something up for the good of your family. I know, I'm just hesitating, because, you know... But if a time comes, and I have to do it, I'll put Yasu's need first. Well, your sacrifice won't be in vain. You're helping Yasu, and that's a beautiful f thing. Still, it'll be hard if I can just wave a magic wand and transform from a bellious punk into a polite, like, kind lady like you. I can help you. I'll even let you borrow some of my dresses if you ask nicely. I couldn't, even if I wore one. I'd never be as cute as you are. <coughs> Cute. Um, I mean, I, I can't take that big of a step. I'd have to work my way there, <laughs> mentally prepare myself, and, well, <laughs> for someone who thinks they can can't be cute, you are a sight to see when you are embarrassed, Twin. Uh, I mean, thanks. You're welcome. She's such a great person. She helped me a lot during this last month. It's such a beautiful day and enjoying it together with Megumi. Even if I've got a lot of work to do, I'm so glad she's here to help me. Now might be a good time to ask. Hey Megumi, I wanted to ask you, why don't you work at the orphanage? I don't think you ever told me. Oh my goodness, you're right. Well, the simplest answer is that I'm somewhat of an orphan myself, so I know how they feel. Oh, I'm sorry, Megumi. It's fine. It was a long time ago. The past doesn't have to define us. But you said that your past is the reason you work at the orphanage. Oh, well, that uh, is why I started doing it now, but... Now... I discovered how much I like helping them and teaching them how to organize their lives. Organize their lives. I like figuring out what activity to do and when to do them, what will be for dinner, those sorts of things. I've actually been taking business learning courses online. I'd like to work at a city hall someday. Well, so one day you'll be a mayor, M Megumi? Oh no, nothing that prestigious. I just want to help shape the city and care for its people. Use your passion for organization to make entire ha happy. I mean, I like cheering for people. I like cheering people up. So, what if we could spread the happiness even more? Hey, I believe you can do it, even if you put your mind to it. Thanks. With a bit of luck, I can probably t make it happen. Well, let me know how I can help. Sure, working together, I'm sure we will do it. Well, she isn't lacking in fighting spirit, that's certain. We arrived at the beach pretty quick. Megumi changed into a swimsuit faster than me. Hey Rin, what is the thing what is that thing over there? Over where? Wait, Megumi, don't just walk off the path. I shouldn't leave her alone out here. Whoa, is this a cave entrance? I've never seen it before. Right in front of us. The ground part into a sinister looking entryway. It blends in with the surrounding area so well. I'm surprised that Megumi could spot it from afar. It looked like it had been here for a long time. Is this place off limits or restricted? I don't think so. Most people just stay on, stay on the beach. We got lost in conversation and walked really far. This is interesting. Are you up for a little exploring? 
Maybe, but we won't. But we don't have a flashlight. You know, if you're scared, you can hold my hand. E. But what? Oh, she's so cute when she gets flustered. I'm not scared. Let's go in. Well, if she's okay with it, let's head inside. <laughs> I know what Corey would be doing at this point. He'd probably just say, turn off a webcam, Nico. <laughs> I don't know why my heart is racing so fast, but I'm not going back down now. Wow. This place is amazing. As rays of light shine in a hole in the cave ceiling, we are struck by a wondrous, fantastic sight. Most of the interior is made out of gl glistening mi minerals reflecting the light that sip through the openings in the steel. Oh, pardon me. There are no signs of any recent human activity. The last time people were in this cave must have been centuries ago. A trickle of water flows through the centre, making a light ripple down that echoes off the walls. All around the cave, small pillows have been formed, both protruding up from the floor and hanging from the ceiling. Megumi starts examining them, dazzled by their beauty. Is this ice? I don't think so. As I slide my finger across the surface of the pillar, for the sake of curiosity, I notice that the glossy surface easily gives way. I'm left with small tra traces on my fingertip. It doesn't feel cold. I'll just lick my finger, see how it tastes. Hmm, it, it's salt. Oh, that makes sense. The town was founded by salt miners who dug it in old wasteland. Interesting. Hidden treasures. Do you think we're the first people to see this? I doubt we are, but I'd like to think so. Suddenly, I become all too aware of the fact that the two of us are here alone. In this place that seems so magical, sharing this special moment. Looking at her now, I'm starting to feel a strange desire to be closer to her. My hand strangely empty, as if it hold a void that can only be filled by hers. You know, if you want, we can... Okay. Megumi's fingers are sliding across my wrist. Her hand is so soft and warm. Her warmth in my palm is giving me a rush of happiness, a kind of joy I've never felt before. I want more. I want her. Megumi's the only thing on my mind right now. Rin? Yes, Megumi? I don't know how to say this, but it's okay. I feel the same way. This is it. I gently get closer to her and my place and place my lips on Megumi. As the moment approaches I realise the truth. This girl is unbelievably beautiful, kind, passionate girl. She's the one. I've been waiting for this so long, without even knowing. Instinctively, instinctually I push forward, my passion leading the way to heavenly bliss. Then as I feel Megumi jerk back in hesitation, I pull away for for a moment to give her more time to prepare. Then I push forward once more, this time more slowly. Megumi doesn't pull away, meeting me half halfway after strengthening her own resolve. The moment our passion finally decides to collide, my mind is blown away by the emotions cascading from within me. I feel her hot breath. I smell her sweet scent. I taste the lovely tang of her lips. Every part of the experience 
is so far beyond my expectation. We've never known we've known each other for only a few months now, but we've seen but we've been spending all all of our days together. I never thought that love could find people in such bleak times. My brother's dead and I'm raising a child with no job. But even though all the suffering I've fallen in love with Megumi, she means more to me right now than my whole life ever did. I've never felt this way about anyone before and probably won't ever again, but it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters now that we are close together. I've never had a lover before and I never understood why everyone wanted me to get one. It wasn't necessarily impossible, even if I never had much interest. But, meeting someone like Megumi, I want someone like her in my life. Not just as a friend, but something more. The world love danced in my mind. Can I tell her that? Will she understand? I do worry a bit about how everyone else will react to us. A small stubborn town like this, They'll never allow a relationship like ours. Still, for now, this is just about the two of us. Megumi, Shimizu, and Rin Fujimoto. In this precious moment, nothing else matters. We remain in the cave for some time, embracing and watching the sky through the opening in the ceiling. Neither of us speak a word as we stand here together. My head feels so light. What happened after that, I don't really remember. I wake up, back on the beach. It is already dark outside and the glimmers of the stars are reflected in the sea. It is probably time I go home. Megumi must have left without me. It's been a few hours since then, but I haven't heard from her yet. I check my phone and the only thing I see is a faint message from Megumi saying, simply, sorry. Panic invades my mind as I try to write something back. I tell her that it's fine. I try to call her cell phone, but there's no answer. I'm lost. I don't know what happened or why she's not answering. It's been more than a week now. I couldn't muster up the courage to go see Megumi, and she hasn't answered her phone. At least I know she's receiving my messages, that she's alright. Even if she changed her mind about me, her safety is still one of my biggest concerns. We didn't make a mistake that day. I know we both felt something in that moment, and I know she was there with me. I was hoping I could tell her how I felt when we woke up, but she must have gotten scared. I wish I could just go meet her at starlight, but I don't know how to approach her. I spent over 30 minutes standing at the gaze the other day, but my heart wouldn't let me proceed and tell Megumi how I feel. Well, at least Yasu seemed to be doing better. Spending time with his friends seemed to have helped him greatly, and now he even speaks to me from time to time. Except Tokyo's to be up utterly backward in every way, but the parents here certainly give their children plenty of freedom. I didn't think I'd make a good parent when I first heard that I'd have to take care of Yasu. Even now there are lots of things I can't do for him. I can't run from my responsibility. Yasu is depending on me. I have to keep doing my best. Today, today, I've made up my mind, and it's time to take action. In a few hours, I'll go and meet Megumi. I can't wait forever, for forever. First, Yasu. He'll be playing with his friends while I'm out. Okay, Yasu, you behave yourself at Katashi, okay? And don't wander off without Daisuke. The last thing Daisuke needs is to be left alone with his bad decisions. Yesterday, I saw him eating bugs right off the ground. Okay, have fun out there, Yasu. He's just standing there. Is something wrong? Of you. 
Did he just say he loves me? That felt nice. I'm, I'm, I think I'm glad I moved here. Now if I could only finish... Doorbell ring. Huh? I'm not expecting anyone, nor in a rush, to deal with anything but Megumi. I should answer the door though. Hello? Hey, Rin. Megumi? Um, can I please come in? Of course, please. Just as I was about to try meeting her, what a coincidence. The house may not be in the most presentable state, but I can't turn her away, not after all this time. Are you okay? It's been more than a week. How are we going for time? Still got nine minutes left. Okay. I couldn't bring myself to answer. I figured that speaking directly was better than calling or texting, especially after, especially after so long. Fair enough. I agree. Fair enough. At first, I was worried that you got lost in the, that cave. Then I thought I might have done something that upped you, up, upset you. That's about the cave. I woke up on the beach. I don't remember leaving. The last thing I remember is... Uh, the next thing I remember is waking up on the beach with no idea how I got there or why. Just blacking up with no memory. It spooked me. We weren't drunk or anything. It was quite weird. Maybe there are some... Maybe there are old gas fumes in the cave that knocked us out. Either way, experience that on top of our moment. It scared me. I hate to admit it, but for a while, I even thought you might have done something to me. But, but, I'd never do anything bad to you. Megumi, I know, I realised that after a few days, I'm sorry for doubting you. Wait. If you realise that, why did you just take... Wait. If you realise that, why did it take you so long to come see me? I was scared. Why? Well... After that day, I also realised something else. I love you. I can't go an hour without thinking of you anymore, even when I'm working. I remember the feeling of your lips, and I just want to do it again. Sorry trainees, we're going to have to cut this episode here. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you're not part of a Trainman Legacy, be sure to subscribe and become a trainee today. Also. Comment down what you think of this series so far, and we're going to continue the full playthrough of this. Anyway, thanks for watching. Can we go for 17 likes on this video? And I'll see you guys in the next one. Sayonara.